Welcome to chemical reactor design, where both mass and energy are conserved and balanced. We are now in lecture 45, the first segment. In this lecture, we're going to talk about non-isothermal multiple chemical reactions. Most reacting systems involve more than one reaction and do not operate isothermally. So you run the reactor thinking or hoping that the only reaction which runs is the desired reaction, but this is not the case. Nor the case is where you have isothermal operation, the temperature will change. Thus, this section is one of the most important sections of the book. Type energy balance for multiple reactions in a reactor. Let's look at the energy balance that we derived together. Here. Okay. Let's develop an energy balance equation that is compatible with multiple reaction systems to calculate the total heat transfer rate exchanged with the reactor okay so basically i want to calculate q dot right okay but i have multiple reactions let's take an example let's see let's look at this reactor where two reactions take place a is converted to b but also a is converted to 2c and we have the delta h reactions for each of these of reactions tamam let's look at the flow rate if a naught is 10 mol per second and at the exit we have if a 4 mol per second if b 5 mol per second and if c 1 mol per second so the question is to operate the reactor isothermally so we want to operate the reactor isothermally yani we want t equals to t naught so okay and therefore we end up with delta h dot total equals q dot tamam because this is what we have here okay that means we have to remove heat at the same rate as it is released from the two reactions together this is how we operate isothermally so to operate the reactor isothermally heat at a rate of something need to be removed from the reactor at what rate what is your guess well that's quite easy how is it easy well we know the rate at which heat is released from each reaction and therefore we sum it up and we find the q dot which is the total heat rate transferred okay the total heat transfer rate okay so let's find out let's find out how much heat is released from the first reaction the delta h reaction is minus 200 kilojoule per mole per mole of what per mole of a reacted so let's see how many moles of a reacted tamam through reaction one and then let's look at the second reaction where the delta h reaction is minus 100 kilojoule per mole per mole of what per mole of a reacted through reaction two so let's look how many moles of a reacted through reaction two so in total how many moles of a reacted well we have 10 entering for exiting so we have six mole of a per second reacted all of it went through reaction one obviously not through reaction one we have five moles of b formed so that means this six tamam on we have five went through this reaction tamam and then obviously let's look at fc two and because the stoichiometry is one to two that means one mole one mole per second of air went through 
second reaction. So in total, we have here five times five times minus 200, that is minus 1000, right? And then we have here one times minus 100, and that is Okay, so if you sum these together, you will get this answer. Okay, so you need to remove heat at a rate of 1100 kilo kilojoule per second. And you knew now how we calculated the total heat released from each of from the both reactions. Okay, so there is a summation involved. Okay. طيب. So, again, we want to develop an energy balance equation that is compatible with multiple reaction systems to calculate the total heat transfer rate. The total heat transfer rate ex exchanged with the reactor. So, how would we modify the above equation? How would you modify the above equation? Well, obviously, you have to sum up the heat released from each of the reaction. So, use summation. Therefore, we use summation. Okay. And this guy, the delta S reaction, okay, that is for every reaction see the summation is over the j where j is the reaction number okay the summation is over j where j is the reaction number but also delta h reaction we know that it should be pair a given reactant ir what is ir a reactant and reaction j a reactant reaction j so we look at delta h reaction for that reaction pair moles of i R reacted and we multiply by the amount or the rate of generation right the rate of generation for that reactant IR through through that reaction which is J which is J so we're G J I R subscript GIR is the rate of generation of the reactant IR through reaction J. And of course, there's negative because otherwise the rate of generation of a reactant will be negative, right? So I have put negative before it to make it positive. Okay, so I hope now this is clear. So anything else changes? No, this does not change. This does not change. The only portion of this equation that changes is this portion where now I'm summing all the rate of the heat released from the reactions or if it, they were in, endothermic all the heat that were absorbed from the reactions using delta H reactions and the rate at which the moles are appearing tamam or the moles, the rate at which the moles are reacting. Okay, very good. So now we got ourselves a nice looking algebraic equation. Okay, for the energy balance. Type. Now let's talk about energy balance for multiple reactions in plug flow reactor. So now let's develop a differential energy balance equation that is suitable for multiple reactions taking place in a plug flow reactor. Let's do that by starting from the energy balance for a single reaction taking place in a plug flow reactor. The same concept, Chabab. We look at an energy balance which is suitable for one reaction. Okay, so we have these two equations. Which one do you think is more suitable to work with? Can we work with X when we have multiple reactions? No, we can't. It's useless. Therefore, we look, we we'll work with this form of the energy. Okay, so here we go. 
تمام ده ده انرجي بالانس فور سنجل رياكشن ان تيرمز اوف مولر فلوريت ان تيرمز اوف مولر فلوريت سو هاو دو وي ميديفاي ويتش تيرم اوف ذس ايكويشن ويل ميديفاي ويل اوبفيسلي يو نو ذات ويل ميديفاي ذس تيرم صح تو انكلود اول ذا هيتس ريليز فروم اول ذا رياكشنز سو وات دو وي دو انتروديوس ا summation introduce a summation do you see through summation over this term okay the other terms will be the same this will be the same okay again let's understand what are we summing first of all i want you to know that we are summing the product we're not summing this and then multiplying by the summation of this we're not doing this we are first multiplying this term by this term get a value then sum it with the other term for the other reaction okay tamam so here we have minus r j i r so this is the rate of reaction this is the rate of disappearance so minus r is the rate of disappearance this is the rate of disappearance of reactant IR through reaction J تمام multiply by multiplied by also minus delta H reaction based on the reactant IR through reaction J تمام see شباب you have here JIR therefore you have here JIR تمام and so on we do this over the reactions for each reaction we have one of these terms tamam let's take an example so here's an example tamam we have considered the following reaction sequence carried out in a plug flow reactor okay so we have reaction one and then we have reaction two okay so let's write the differential equation for the temperature so let's write it dt divided by dv equals the summation of the following so let's first ask this question how many terms we will have for minus r times minus delta h reaction how many terms but well, we have only two terms because we have two reactions tamam so we write we write uh, our, a term for each reaction tamam so let's start with reaction one so there we go we have the first one is minus r one tamam so we write for reaction one based on which reactant based on which ir well we have only one reactant so it has to be a and then we close our eyes and write H reaction tamam for which reaction also reaction 1 based on which reactant reactant A so make sure that you have if you have 1A here here you should have also 1A tamam okay at temperature T okay then plus we write another term because we have another reaction and it's again minus R2 and then I open my eyes and look at reaction 2 we have only one reactant which is B so it has to be with respect to B we close our eyes and write delta H reaction based on also to be at temperature T tamam okay of course we have we don't have place here but let me say if we had a place we would write minus u times a times t minus t a okay tamam and then we divide it by the summation of this guy now this summation is over the species while this summation is over the reactions this summation is over the species so how many species we have well we have three species a b and c so f a times c p a plus f b times CPB plus FC times CPC. Come on.
So this is how you write the terms. You can see Shabab again. Okay, this is the U A times T minus T A. So here we just flip the T's. We write it again this way. And then the most important term here that we have two terms. Terms number one and terms number two. Okay, see Shabab? It's the product which are being summed. Okay, don't please don't say minus R. 1a plus minus r 2b multiply by minus delta h reaction 1a plus minus delta h reaction 2b don't do this okay it's the product that is summed so again minus r 1a and delta h reactions also for 1a and for the second term it's 2b and here also we have to be okay so i hope now you are familiarized with how to write energy balance for multiple reactions we're gonna apply this on an example in the second segment of this lecture see you then